Okay, good morning, and uh, uh, let's start the session for today. Half of the class are missing for some unknown reason. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so let's first take a look at what we've done last time. A quick review on the things we talked about, and then we're going to dig into the rest of the uh, week for construction and destruction and understand how those things work. Uh, we're going to do that by start developing uh, um, um, a class you will see soon. So, so let's start with uh, what we have done. We talked about uh, uh, input and output the last time. How to do input, output, how to, how uh, see in and see out our objects. Mm, instances of see in from O stream, the I stream, and see out from O stream. We understood that unlike um, C language, that we had the values we wanted to, to, to make outputs with we told to a function how to print them, we're going to change the status on line C, we're going to change the status of the output object and tell to an object to print, therefore the output will change. So we said C out from now on, you get, so then we'll, we would say C out, the next, uh, the next printout is in width, width of 20, then we print it will go to width of 20. If I say C out from now on, fill all the spaces with uh, asterisks, then any printout that happens, spaces after that will be extra spaces, filling spaces will be set to that. We understood that each uh, class has uh, methods uh, that change its state and it has method that uh, told us what the state of the input and output uh, objects are. For example, for C in, we know that it has a method called get line that receives a line, so we can replace the extraction uh, operator and use get line instead to get series of information up to a delimiter. Also, we know uh, C in and C out are objects that uh, when they, something goes wrong with them, they become disabled, they don't respond anymore. You have to clear them before you do that. We said that C in and C out are the only two objects for input and output. I lied. Uh, output actually has more than one object. It's not only C out. It's not only C out. It's uh, C lock and C error. So these two objects are made up of O stream too. So if I said over here, what's your name, and I printed over, instead I put over here C log, C log, and C error. If I did that, it will still work, and you will see that it would print something on a screen. Now the question would be, why the heck would I need to have something like that? Why do I need to have three different objects to print on a screen? For input, when you have something going wrong, you have to clear it to continue your input. That makes sense. It means uh, something is, so because the, the stream of uh, input has some problem. And because of that fact, you have to stop, fix it, and continue. But when something goes wrong with the output, you need to be able to log that somewhere you need to be able to show an error message. So if one object goes out of state, you need another one to be able to still convey to the user what's going on. So standard log is and standard error for that. They're identical to C out. But the good thing is that that failed state that C in and C out has, you can artificially or in a custom way, you can set them actually into a fail state. So you can have your debugging statements printed on C log, and you can set C log into a fail state manually. So all your debugging statements will vanish. It's not going to show. 
I'll te we'll teach you how those things are. But just be aware that C out there are three objects made out of O stream to print on console. One is C out, the usual thing you print everything with. with. C log is to log stuff with, like debugging things and things like that. C error is to print error statements on. Okay? In case uh, the other two are disabled. So these are the things that we need to know. Then uh, we created a utils class to be able to do our common stuff that we want to carry from workshop to workshop, from program to program. We created uh, a utils uh, 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 class for ourselves with a module. In that utils thing, we're going to put the common things we want to do over and over. And we started with writing a foolproof. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's Google map is on. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, what was saying? Yeah. So, uh, we created a foolproof entry for get double, and we understood how it works by actually trying to get something from the console input. And if it failed, we printed something. We apologized. We ignored all the stuff buffer that we have. And then we try it again over and over until user comes to its senses and prints put something that actually makes sense. And then after that, because we know even though user enters something valid, there might be something after the value everything afterwards. We could add a mechanism over here to actually test and make sure that user only enters a double. So what you can do is that you can uh, read the value, and after that, you can read a single character. You can read the value for double, and after that, read a single character. By doing so, what happens? So when the best scenario is that you put a valid double value in the keyboard, right? And then you hit enter. So the double value is read, and enter remains in the keyboard buffer, right? So if you read a single character after C into double, if that single character is new line, it means the user only entered a double. But if it's anything else other than new line, then we're in trouble, right? So if that's the case, we could do something like that. We could actually uh, create it that way. I didn't do it. If you want to do it, please change this to that. Um, so I just told you how. So if in any workshop or anything like that, I ask that, now you know how. We did a get C string over there to be able to get uh, strings uh, from the entry that includes white spaces inside. We use the function get line. And we said get line receives information from uh, the I stream up to a certain delimiter. If you do not mention what? That delimiter is new line. You can always have something else uh, as a delimiter. And you have a length added to your get line to that length. Tells to the get line function that uh, this is the maximum number of things you're going you're gonna to read. Now, we said if get line reaches to the maximum size and doesn't hit the new line afterwards, puts the C in in a fail state, which means too many things being added. But of course, uh, uh, if it doesn't, then you know what happens, right? And because get line eats that delimiter, you don't need to ignore after as we did for the double. Because if somebody enters a double, we know the minimum thing that remains in the keyboard will be a new line. At least you're going to have a new line in the keyboard. So cleaning up will be OK. But for get line and backslash n, if it reaches the backslash and the backslash n is removed, I do not need to remove it. We're good down to this point. And obviously, if it fails, then we know that <coughs> they entered too many characters and we stop. So there is another function with C in that we can actually use. It's called get. Now, get has many different shapes and forms. Get has many different shapes and forms. For example, say mm, 
I'm just going to put over here. So you know what I'm going to put? C out. I'm going to take change this back to C out because it doesn't make sense to do C out and C log for this. This, you're supposed to do it if uh, you want to actually log something. Well, I'll demonstrate later on in when we are developing actually a class. Let's say I want to let's say I want to ask the user to respond with y and n for yes and no. I want to have a function for that. Okay? So I want to have a function. When I call the function, the function is going to tell me true or false if user says yes or no. Okay? So if I want to do that, what do I do? I'm going to go in that utils thingy of mine. You're okay, my friend? <laughs> you okay? Everything's good? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that reminds me, actually. <laughs> All right, it's water, it's not coffee. Huh? <laughs> it's like, that would burn. Anyways, so uh, if I want to do that, obviously, first I have to design the, 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 the function. It's going to be obviously in the ut utils, and in here it returns a Boolean, and the name is yes. Right? That's what I want. So I'm going to issue something, like uh, you want to exit? Yes or no. And I want user to only enter Y or N and nothing else is acceptable. We good down to this point? All right. So how do we do that? First, let's create the body of the, the function. So the function looks like this. And the good thing is it creates a prototype immediately for it. What is a prototype for a function? Prototype for a function is a function with an empty body that returns some garbage as the return value, just for you to compile and see if the skeleton of your program is proper or not. Um, IDEs do that for you. They built that thing right now. Yeah, but it's a good idea to get used to that yourself. So, so what I want to do, I want to find out if user is actually uh, entering something that is true or false. So naturally, when I create a function like this, when any function for me that returns something, I usually create something like result, and I'm going to set it to false. Response, let's say, Boolean, yeah, uh, result, that's fine. Uh, result, and I'm going to return the result. Usually, usually I do something like this. Okay, so, and then I'll set the this result to whatever it's supposed to, be. and it may change. I may not use it, so it doesn't. Now, then we need to actually get user response on yes or no, right? Uh, we are assuming that some message is printed before this that asks yes or no. So in here, I'm going to have a character response, okay, and I'm going to set that response to null too, uh, and then I'm going to say response is set to cin.get. That function is another function of cin. It returns one character out, but when you look at what it returns actually, but if you look at what it returns, what does it return? Take a look. An integer, right? So the question comes to mind. Wait a minute. You said get receives a character. Isn't character uh, a character? What is it returning an integer? First of all, now we have Unicode. It's two bytes instead of one. Or uh, other keys, keys that are not standard ASCII keys. Look at your keyboard. You have F1 on that one. You have delete. End, right arrow, left arrow. What are the codes for these? Codes for these are codes bigger than uh, the ASCII code. 
and it comes in as an integer. How it's received, you'll find out later on. This is not the case to go through it, but it is possible to do something like that. And because of that, uh, it returns an integer, so it could be wider. That's one thing. That's one way of doing it. Another way of calling the get, so that's one overload of the uh, function get. The other one is to write cin.get and put response in here. This get receives a, a, a reference of a character and sets it to a value that is coming in. They both work. The difference is that the top one retrieve, returns an integer. The left one returns the C in itself. So you can immediately check to see if it's failed or not, for example. If you want, you can actually do something like that. If you want, you can say, for example, if C in the fail. OK? You can actually do that. So first, it's going to call the get to get the response. And then at the end, it returns C in. So the entire thing is replaced with C in, then C in dot fail. You can check. So you can do two things in, at one shot. But I'm not going to do that. Just letting you know what the differences are. So that's another way of doing C in get. OK? So I have received a, a character now. Now the next thing I have to do, I have to get and make sure the next one is new line. So in here, I'm going to create a new line. And I'm going to say over here, cin.get new line. So I get two things. OK? I get two things. Now, the first one is picking up the first character user entered, right? The second one picks up the second thing user entered. Now, what these two values should be for me the first one should be either y or n. The second one should be a new line, right? So that, uh, that I'll do. So in here, I'm going to say if a uh, while, OK, response is not equal to y. And, right, so while it is not equal to y, and not, and it is not equal to lowercase y, and not equal to uppercase n, and not equal to lowercase n. So that's my first thing. So if Response is neither of these. I have to continue, right? Or new line, correct? So I'm going to say if it, if new line is not equal to not equal to backslash n. Or this. Yeah, to make it kind of somewhat, I usually write it like this because this uh, becomes easier to understand. When you have a big condition like that, this is a nice way of, of putting it together. You see, so I'm saying while. And this is and this one comes here. If it doesn't correct it for me, I would really appreciate it. Something like this. So just to show you what happened over here, I have if it's not equal to new line or this is not happening, I'm gonna continue the one. Very good. I don't know if it's right or not, I'm just coming it coming up with it right now. So uh, we'll see what happens, OK? So going back up, I'm not going to leave it like that. Just uh, uh, wanted to show you what the conditions were. So I'm going to put it like that. And 
Can we see back there? Can you see it back there at the end of the? All right. There we go. So <clears throat> now if any of these happen, I have to say C out uh, only yes or no is acceptable. Mm, only yes or no. I don't want to go there. And, and I'm going to do like that, and I'm going to say retry. Okay? And do like that. And then what I do, I'm going to get these again. So there is only one problem over here. When I'm at this stage, if the reason I am in it was a new line. I have lots of garbage after that, right? So I have to flush the keyword. So in here, I'm going to say, if new line is not equal to new line, then what do I do? C in dot ignore. OK? So what happened over here? I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's walk through it, see if it's good or not. So I get these two characters. I come over here. If this one is not new line, or the response is neither of these things, then it's going to come in here and say that yes or no is acceptable. Then it says, if the reason I'm in here is that new line is not new line, it means I clean those things up. I don't need to set any failure thingy over here because it's impossible for somebody to enter to something and it's not a character. A character is anything, right? So it's not going to fail. And then I'm going to get the response and a new line again. And then I'll continue. So when I get out, when I'm out here, definitely new line is new line. And response is one of those four. So I have to return the result. So I don't Boolean result anymore. It's easier over here to. It's easier over here to. Just bring these two down here and say, hey. If it is equal to y, or it's equal to y, that's true, right? So that returns true. So if it is if response is y or lowercase y, true will be returned, otherwise false. So this function of mine will only accepts y or n, yes or no. Yes. You can do anything you want. I just came up with this. It's very possible that they're 900 way better than this. I know. I know. I know you're. So give me line number. Line number 40? Yes. Put do while in here? No, no, no. If you do a do while, uh -huh. and there is nothing in the console, it would say ignore. Does it show an error or just? It doesn't show an error. So see, seeing it, get ignore is essentially a loop reading characters until it teaches back. It's back to back. If you, it's not like flushing the keyboard. In, F flush in IPC or you you use the loop, you use the loop right character. So if you if you run that and there's an empty keyboard, it's going to wait for you to enter something, so it's not going to work. Ignore something should be there to be ignored. So that's why we can't put it at the top. But um, 
there are many ways to, to, to write this thing. And probably if you look at the other class, it's not going to be the same version because I never memorize. I just do it. And it's very possible that it doesn't even work. We have to fix it. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. So this is the yes thingy that we have written. Now, um, so in here I'm going to say, see out. Mm. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then in here I'm going to have something like that. And in here, I'm going to say if yes, oh, ut, sorry, dot yes, I'm going to say see how good for you. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to say sorry to hear that. Okay, so let's try it and see if it actually works or I made a boo-boo somewhere. So I'll run it. So it stops over here. I'm going to say, uh, are you okay? I will say yes. It says only Y or N. So this is so far so good, right? Now I'm going to say uh, uh, only Y. Good for you. So that's working. One more time. Only N. Sorry for you. That's, uh, so it's actually working, right? Are we good? Now, we could have improved this thing. So because when you're saying yes, you like to, maybe you, it's a good idea to actually bring this over here like this. Just show the message, right? We could do that. So I could actually come to utils over here and say I want a constant character pointer for prompt whatever the prompt is, and I'm going to set it to null PTR, which means if they didn't enter anything, I won't show it. So if they have a choice to do it or not, then I'll come over here, add the constant character pointer, const character pointer prompt, okay? They'll, then in here, I'm going to say if prompt exists, see out prompt, right? Easy breezy. So if prompt is not null, print it. So now it, it makes our life a little easier, right? It's just you just put the damn thing over there instead of having to see out and works the exact same way. No difference. Right? Okay. I am not okay. Are we okay with this? All right. Now get that's not the only thing with get. Get has many different things. I'm telling you, I'm not gonna give you an example. Please go study. There, everything's in the, uh, I think, week four or something. I don't know, wherever it is. Um, Git has a, uh, a, another uh, version, too, that is exactly like get line. So you see get line over here? If you just remove the line and only do get, the signature is identical to get line. The, the, there are two differences between get line and get. Number one. If get reaches to the limit and doesn't hit the delimiter, it will not fail. It will not fail C in. Get line will. So if get line reaches the maximum number and it doesn't hit the delimiter, like somebody enters too many characters, it fails the C in. But get will not do that. Why? Maybe you want to continue reading if you want to, for whatever reason. So get is option. Number two, get will not eat the delimiter. I like get line. If get line you, reaches the delimiter, it removes it from the buffer. But get leaves it in the buffer. So the next read you are going to do will be the delimiter. That's the only difference. And for whatever reason you want to use those, that's what you do. Okay? Are we good? All right. The rest identical to get line. Yes. Nine forty one. C E dot C dot or C P R that you have also 
Yes, 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 that's the whole idea. It, it, it really ignores. Okay, so, so it does exactly what it says. Yes, yes, so what happens is that it goes these many characters until it hits the new line. Oh. If it, if it, or, so, or hit the new line, whichever comes first. If new line doesn't get, it will fail. Actually, I'm not quite sure about that. Try it. I don't know. Shall we try it? I don't know. Try it yourself. Put 10, 10 and enter 20 CC, see if C in fails. I don't remember it, quite frankly. OK? So see if uh, C in ignore, uh, but uh, C in ignore fails if it reaches the limit. I do not know. OK? Easy. <laughs> Find it out yourself. Sounds like a bird when I'm drinking. Anyways. So, are we good? Uh, All right. Sorry. Yes. A Please. Uh, just curious. You said sometimes when you put C, ignore. Sometimes you put without it. Sometimes you put without it. Yeah. No, just my finger hit the two, and I don't want to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you have, when you want to really ignore everything, you put a big number. Now, I was hitting one, two came out, so that's, there's no reason. <laughs> yes. Fixing what? Manually all the time. Control K, D will do it for you. Control K, Control D. That does it for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but sometimes it doesn't do a good, proper job. You can go to options and go to environment in options, and you can set the the thing to not only set the th first of all, actually, thank you for mentioning that. I always mention it in my setups. This is extremely important to do, is to go to uh, tools options in, in, in the text editor, I think. Text editor, I think the very first thing that you see over here, uh, all languages and tabs. Insert spaces, never keep tabs, ever, ever. Always insert spaces. By default, it comes to keep tabs. Why is it not good? Tab, depending on environment, the size of tab changes. Some environment sets it to three, the other environment sets it to eight. And tab means next tab stop, which means you move your text, your source code from one environment to another environment, suddenly goes bananas because the tab changes. Always set inserts if, if when you are coding. It's extremely important so your code remains the same way moving from one platform to another. Yeah, because it, when you press tab, what happens is this. So when you press tab, it actually puts three spaces. You see? I'm, I'm putting tab and I'm doing left arrow, it goes one, two, three. If it's in the other setting, when you put tap and you do left arrow, it jumps one, three characters back. Always make uh, spaces instead of tap. Always. Extremely important. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that. All right, so that's that. So we are done with all these good things. And uh, so from, you're on your own to study about C in and C out and how to do foolproof reading and things like that. If you have any questions, you bring it to class, and I'll gladly explain it to you. But done. I'm not going to talk about that anymore, OK? I told you the things that, uh, that you need, uh, give you examples that you wanted to. So uh, essentially, this get C and get new line, you can do it after the double sure that it's actually valid. So that thing you can do. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Five minutes break, and then you're going to come back, and that's brain frying time, which means go wash your face. I want you to pay 100% attention when I continue with the rest, OK? I'm going to pause it. OK, now it's after the break. We know that we know that C language 
does not support, we know that C language does not support uh, strings. We have no such thing. We don't have a variable to hold somebody's name. To hold somebody's name, I have to create an array and put the individual things in it, right? We know that C++ supports it. C++ actually has an object called string, which you are not allowed to use this semester. OK? You're going to use it next semester. Since we are not allowed to use it, we'll write it. We'll create it together. And using that, we will actually learn how to program. So we will create our own string class that makes, simulates a variable as if you can literally get someone's name and put it in a variable, print it, write justify it, let's just do whatever you want to do with it. Got it? So let's do it. So first of all, this one is going to go under a dot, uh, uh, what do I call it, uh, yes tester. So that's that. Uh, utils, we're going to need to, we're going to need it. We're going to add lots of stuff to it. So I will add a class. OK, what should I call this class? Don't call it string because we have a string. I don't want, it's not that it's going to be a problem because it's going to be in namespace Seneca. But I don't want you to forget something and then it goes back to the C string. I want to be a different name. What should I call it? SDR. Okay. So SDR, that's going to be the name. Are we good with this? Any objections? SDR, SDR it is. The other class chose my SDR. So <laughs> this one is SDR. Is SDR okay? All right. So SDR. So we create a class called SDR. And SDR is supposed to hold a string for us. Then I'm going to go as usual. If not define. If not def. If not defined. Uh, so we are in Seneca. And uh, this is SDRH. Define and namespace Seneca. Put the string uh, in there. So that's my class. Save. Then we'll come down to SDR.CPP namespace Seneca. Now I can. Oh, 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 oh. Now I can actually think what I want to create. So I have my class. OK? Are we OK on this point? The microphone is coming up. So I want to create a class that represents, that's going to encapsulate a C string and do all the dirty work that we do with C string behind the scene. So when you create a variable and you set, so set it to something, it can set it for you. It does all the things that we, and it's going to be a dynamic C string. So it's going to change its size perfectly to the values that is coming in. So if we do something like this, what type of an attribute do you think I need to put over there to be able to encapsulate a C string? Dynamic array. So a dynamic array is kept, dynamic array of character is kept in what? In a, no, no, no. What, what type of a variable can hold a dynamic array of string, a, a dynamic array of character array? What type of a pointer? Character pointer. So that was the answer. <laughs> we need a character pointer. So I'm going to create a character pointer as a thing. So in here, it's going to be called. <clears throat> character and pointer, and I'm going to call it mData. So that's going to be the data that I'm going to hold. OK? That's private, and I'm going to go public in here. The very first thing I need to do is to be able to create an empty string, right? 
So what I will do, I need a constructor for it. We know how to create a constructor. And I need a destructor to make sure that when it's gone, the dynamic thingy is fixed. So let's create the code for this. The destructor is simply deleting the uh, data, right? I don't need to set it to null afterwards because it's a destructor afterwards. The class is dead. Who cares if the data in it is null or not? And then in here, for the constructor, what I do, for the constructor, uh, an empty string for me is what? An empty string is when m data is null, right? Correct? And probably the very first thing I need to do with this is to print it. So I'm going to say over here void print like that. And obviously, I'm not going to change what I'm changing in here. And <clears throat> how do I print if m data is not null? C out m data, right? Done. I have a C out. I'll add it over here. So include IO stream and using namespace STD. I'm ready for the first test. Right? Are we okay with this? So essentially, what I need to do over here is to go in my main, in my tester, and utils, uh, I don't need it. I'm going to remove it. If I need it, I'll bring it back. Seneca that I need. Uh, I'm going to add my string. So in, in, I'm going to say include string.h. And in here, I'm going to say str name. And I'm going to say name.print. This program might, should compile and do nothing, right? Because, and yes, it did nothing. Perfect. So my first attempt of this thing is done, OK? Please keep doing it like this. Don't assume that something is perfect and it's easy, so let me continue debugging. Do it like this so the minor errors are taken and you can continue. When you put 15 functions in your compile and you see 9,500 errors, that's discouraging. Like this, you will always have errors in the recent thing you have written. Obviously, <clears throat> obviously in real life, when I'm actually programming like this, in real life, when I'm programming like this, I'm going to have this on. So I'm going to go in here <clears throat> in the ZAA. I'm going to right click over here and say, tortoise git sync. I'll have the sync dialog always open right in front of me when I am actually programming. And as soon as this happens, I'm going to click on commit. And I'm going to say, empty string class, SDR class with print. OK, commit and push. The first stage there, I can always come back to it. Right? Close. And let the sync be there. So you can keep doing it over and over. And when you can come back to it. Are we good down to this point? Good. So let's continue. Now, the next thing I need to be able to do is to set that name to something. Right? I want to set that name to exactly like what I do with real variables. I want to be able to say set up. Uh, Right? I want to do this. <clears throat> what is assignment at the moment of creation? What is assigned? What is assignment at the moment of creation is called at line six? Uh, class. Class. Initialization. 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 That's not assignment operator. That's not setting. I'm not setting anything. I'm initializing it. So essentially, I could either do it like this, or I can do it like this, or I can do it like this, by definition. OK, so this is potato. This is po. Tato, and this is, I don't know, Pitoto. <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay, so, 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 Petoto. 
OK, so all the same, no reference. They are all the same. And they are all a call to a one argument constructor. We learned no argument constructor. When you do something like that at line 7, you literally see it's a one argument constructor. It's, a, it's building the object with a one argument constructor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to create a one argument constructor. So str, constant character, pointer, data, whatever the data is going to be. Right? So let's create this. So what do I need to do over here? Dynamic memory allocation, all that good stuff, right? The very first thing I need to do over here is to make sure, remember, unused pointers must be null, right? I sounded like Gandalf. You shall not pass. Anyways, so, <clears throat> so if you haven't seen Lord of, uh, Lord of the Ring, then I'm sorry that that joke didn't make sense. <laughs> All right, so, so in here I have to say m data is set to null, ptr, to begin with. Okay, now I'm going to think what I'm going to do. I need to get the length of the thing, so you know what, what we do, right? So in here I have to, and I have to make sure that the data they are passing is actually something. They're not going to send me a null pointer and tell me to do so. I want it to be foolproof, right? So I'm going to say if the data exists, okay, then in here I have to do dma. Right? What does DMA stand for? Dynamic memory allocation. Thank you. So I have to do dynamic memory allocation. Are we good with this? All right. Now, to do dynamic memory allocation, I have to say, what do I say? I'm going to say M data is set to new character. And in here, I have to go strlen, right? I don't want to use string header file. I have utils. I have utils. I'm going to write my own string copy and strlen. I do not want to use the st uh, string header file, get that stupid message having things added to it. What are those? So I'm going to have two functions created, strlen and strcopy. I want to use my own, OK? How do I do that? Easy breezy, the marvel of Copy and paste. OK. So I don't want to bore you with it. It's IPC 144. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to bring the utils up. That becomes my, that, this becomes my string length. OK? So what does string length do? It has a length that is 0, keeps going into the character until it hits the null, adds 1 to the length, returns the length. <laughs> Done, right? Easy breezy. Are we OK with this? That's my strlen, so my strlen is there. Now, how do I do string copy? String copy is almost the same thing as that one. So I'm going to say, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, i is zero. Yeah, that's integer. I don't like it. <laughs> So I have size t0. Again, I keep going until I hit the null. I copy everything from here to here. When I hit the null, I set the destination to null too, so, so it's, a straight, it's, a, it's done. And I return the destination to in case somebody wants to use it. Obviously, it's going to be there, but you can, they can use it like that. Are we OK with this? Problems? Beautiful. So now I can actually do this. I can, what, do I, what can I do? I can say, uh, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I say uh, m data is set to new. And I need utils in here now, by the way. So include utils instead of whatever they have. Include, and then care. In here, I'm going to say ut.strlen of data plus 1. Then I'm going to say uh, ut.sdr copy into mdata the data. Right? So I allocate and copy. Correct? So I allocate and copy. 
I'm going to do that so many times this semester, right? Keep allocating and copy. Alloc Why don't I write a function for it? In util, so I want to allocate and copy, it does it for me. Why do I keep doing it? So I'm going to go into my util, and in here I'm going to create something called, uh, so in here I'm going to say DMAs. So I'm going to write all the DMAs in here. Everything is supposed to deal with dynamic memory allocation. I'll put it in here. So I'm going to say void allo copy, right? Now I want to allocate and copy. Because I want to allocate and copy, I need to actually pass. I cannot just pass a character string like this because that character string is passed by value. It tells to SDR copy. It tells to SDR copy where to copy to but it doesn't change the destination out there, right? So for this one, I need to pass the reference of the character pointer so I can actually allocate and copy into it, okay? So in here, I'm going to say allo copy character pointer. That's the pointer, but I will send the reference of it. That's the destination. And then at right side, what do I have? I have a constant character pointer source that I want to copy from. Are we good? And then what I will do over here is write it properly, okay? <laughs> uh, then what I will do over here is this. I'm just going to go over here and, and in my STR thing, and I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to copy. Where is it? Did I put it in utils? Did I put it somewhere? Oh, I didn't put anything yet. It's in the header phone. Bad person I am. Bad person I am. So, where did I put it? Oh, there we go. So let's do it like this and create the body for it. There we go. So now in here, I'm going to put that. Allo and copy. So this is going to be source. This is going to be uh, source. This is going to be destination. And because the reference is passed down, it's going to be set properly. Destination. And I can actually make my allo copy is very efficient. I can test everything in here. I can say if source is null, if source is good, do all these things, right? Do all the copying for me. If I don't, then destination should be null, correct? If somebody sends me and say copy null, I should make it null, right? All right. All right. All right. Why not? So it allocates and copies. And remember, <clears throat> what the function says, do that. It would say, OK, what if that destination already has something in it? Shouldn't we do a delete in here first? I would say no. I didn't say this is allocate and copy. It doesn't say anything about the allocation. I'm not going to put hidden logic over there. I'm going to do what it says so I don't have to remember later. OK? So you can actually call it allocate and copy, but that's what it is. So, so essentially, allo copy is happening over here. I'll save it. I'll come to my uh, SDR thingy, and I'm going to put over here allo copy. ut.allocopy uh, into mdata the data, right? <clears throat> As you see over here, I have forgotten that allocopy already sets it to null if that is null, right? So I'm checking for the data. Actually, no, I, yeah, but anyways, I'm putting it. Redundancy, but let's say I forgot what that allocopy is intelligent. I just did it that way. It doesn't matter. So allocation happens, and it copies, and I'm done, finished. OK? So now if I run this program of mine, it should actually print Fred Soleil. Yes, it did, right? So. Yeah, so 
So I'm going to create another one just to show you. So that's in here. I'm going to go str s, and I'm going to set it like this this time. I'm going to say this is a string. And I'm going to say s.print. And it is printed like that. Are we OK? So I should put a new line in here, right? C out and L, correct? Right? Right? That's painful. Keep doing that. It would it be nice if I could do this? Well, just go to new line. It would be nice, wouldn't it? To make that happen, what should print return? out, right? Print should return. So let's do that. Why not? So I'm going to go over here in the string, and I'm going to say my print returns O stream. We know that C out is an object of O stream, and we cannot create it, so I have to pass its reference out. And in here, I'm going to say include I O stream using namespace. STD, don't. You are not allowed to use using in header files. That becomes hidden logic again. If somebody includes your header file, suddenly they're going to use the entire STD without knowing. You don't want that. So hard code the calls in here. So if you want o, st o stream, std, o stream, like, write it like this. OK, don't uh, uh, use using. OK, so now we come back to here. And in here, I'm going to say o stream reference. <clears throat> and in here, I'm, I have i o stream, and I am using that one. So in here, I'm going to say return. C out, and I'm going to say mdata. If it's null, if it's not null, print mdata. If it is, print nothing. Right? Right? Are we OK with this? Now, in my code, I, act, I can actually write this. Ta-da. Are we OK? All right. So I'm getting somewhere. It's getting closer to what I wanted to do. Now, I need to be able to set it, right? To set it to something. For now, you'll see that these are all functions. Soon you will see when we get to operator overloading next week, you're going to literally say C out name, and it's going to print it. OK? So for now, I'm doing functions, and then we're going to advanced to better stuff. So if I want to set it, what do I, what do, I do? I'm going to say over here, I'm going to create a function called set. Uh, let's actually create another constructor. Let's say if I want to, <coughs> if I want to create a, a string with that up to certain moment up to certain thing. So I'm going to say, give me the data, and I'll set it. But I want it to be 80 characters max. So if it goes more than 80, it truncates it and makes it 80. Let's do it that way, because it comes handy a lot, especially when you want to create something out of something else and make sure that extra stuff are not printed. That helps a lot, right? So let's create that one. For that, I'll create another one over here. I'm going to call it str, constant character pointer data. And I'm going to set it uh, size t, and I'm going to put length. So for that, first of all, I need to, to have an SDR len, SDR copy that actually copies up to certain length. And for that, I'm going to uh, create another thing in my utils. So the string stuff that I have, I'm going to create something like this. I have, first of all, 
I don't need to call it SDR n copy because it's C++, I can overload it. So I'm going to say SDR copy, destination source, and that's the length. So that's going to do the copying for me. And unlike SDR n copy that doesn't null terminate when it reaches to the end, my SDR copy will. So where is my string stuff? SDR, so I'll put it over here. There you go. So now I'm doing the exact same thing like the other one. So I'm going to say go start from zero, go up to here and the length less than that. So whichever comes first, it's going to stop it and I will null terminate it. Ta-da. So that's good. So that can do SDR len for me. Now I can come back over here. in my str and I can create it. So I can create an allo copy too that does the exact same thing. But let me do something. What if I I did something in the other class because I wrote it in a different way. I could do something. <laughs> and uh, I want to see if I can play that trick too. That's why I'm thinking. It's two seconds to, to do this. You know, I can just be done with it in a second. Um, so let me see how I can, how I can play that trick over here. Because I did this, <laughs> so what did I do in the other class? In the other class, the code that I have written in the other class, this is what I did. I actually. <clears throat> um, wrote something like this. I said, um, uh, we already have the one that is doing dynamic memory allocation, right? So I can simply call the other constructor and go up to certain lengths. So I can actually, I can do this. I can say, so str, I'm going to say data. So first I'm going to call the constructor of the other one. My apologies. I thought I... These pre people, they call me when they have when I have class, and I tell them not to call me when I have class, and they are bad people. Let me just a second. Let me shut this down. Shut this down. And I cannot now go to it anymore. Is it? No, no, no. Let's go ongoing voice call and hang up. There you go. Bad people there. Okay, so let me do it like this. All right, my apologies. All right, so... Now I do it like this. Now I can go m data. I'm going to say, say if m data, uh, if ut, ut dot m data, uh, str len, len of uh, m data is greater than len. Now I'm going to go m data len set to zero, right? I can do this, right? So if the data was bigger than length, I just shorten it. Are we okay with this? Is this code okay? Then I scream that they were bad people. I mentioned 50 times that constructor cannot be called. I cannot call it constructor. Remember? So what happened? Does it compile? Yes. Will it work? No. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? We mentioned that constructors are not functions to be called. 
What happens then at line 16 in this case? At line 16, a temporary nameless string will get created with the data and die immediately at 16.5. That's it. It's like a flash of light. For a second, the screen comes and goes. It has nothing to do with the current object. You just create a string with data, and you kill it immediately. So when it comes over here, M data is not even touched, and you try to do things like that. You cannot call a constructor. So let's go back. That's bad. The other class fell, fell for it so nicely. I was like, ah, so <laughs> anyway, so please don't call a constructor. You cannot call a constructor. Remember that. OK, now I can actually write the code for it. So uh, what do I do? Um, I'm going to write another allo copy for this purpose and reuse it. So the allo copy is going to be exactly like the other one. And it's going to have a length over here size t length and so essentially it works the same way I'm just going to copy everything in here exactly as I had over there the difference is that in here it's going to say new so if in here I'm going to say if uh, so I'm going to have the length over here I'm going to say size size uh, T uh, L is equal to uh, SDR length of source. I have to see what is my length. So I get the length over here. Then I'm going to say over here, if that length that I have is, if, if L that is length is greater than len, OK? So in here, I'm going to say character new character. If L is greater than len, then len, uh, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if len is, so the length that I have length of the string is here. If L is greater than length, then set the length for the length. Otherwise, L itself. Plus one. Right? We can do this. So what happens over here, and in here I'm gonna say SDR copy and I'm gonna put len in here. Okay. Right? So it's gonna allocate exactly the size that I want. If it's greater than that one, it's gonna shorten to that one, and length is gonna only copy to that length. So everything's set. So that this allo copy is gonna actually go up to that length exactly, save it. <clears throat> I'm going to come back to str in here. First, unused pointers are set to null. And <clears throat> then in here, I'm going to say if data, which I do not need to, but I'm just doing it just to show you what we are going to do and let. Are we OK with this? OK, now you can actually change the lengths of things, set the length. So in here, uh, this is a string. Uh, and I can actually do something like, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So I'm going to put over here uh, an 8. And in here, I can say s.print. and run the program, and we're going to get, this is Fred Soleil. So it cut the thing at this is uh, a string. It's cut from the half, and it goes like that. Are we OK with this? So now I have those set. One thing I have to explain over here, uh, there is something uh, that you can do uh, in your strings. <clears throat> Am I initializing m dot over here to null pointer? No, I'm not. Because when the 
structure begins, M data will first have one overwritten with null pointer. In a constructor, instead of setting, because in the body of constructor you're setting everything, if you want to initialize any of the attributes or parts of the class, you can. That is done in a place, in a place we call it initialization area. You cannot Google this because it's a made up word that I made it. Initialization. So don't go say, what is initialization area? Listen to it, write it down. Um, initialization area is here. In any constructor, the space between the close parentheses and open curly bracket is the initialization area. You can initialize any member or parts of the, uh, the, the class in there. Like, for example, I want that to get initialized. I can just write this over here. You write a column, then you write M data, and you write null PTR. No assignment. You cannot put assignment over there because it's literally initialization. Or you can use the universal one like that. That works too. So in the first two, this thing is initialized. In the first two, in this thing is initialized. In here, it's set to null pointer. Got it? So again, at this point, the end result is the same for us, but you need to know. If you ever see you need to initialize something and you cannot set it. For example, what if I have a member attribute that is a reference of something? References cannot be set. They have to be initialized, right? If that uh, M data that I had was reference of something somewhere, I couldn't do it. I had to initialize it. If that's the case, you have to use the initialization area for it. But anyways, so in here, M data is initialized. Here, M data is initialized. Here, M data is set to null PTR. Okay, got it? Down to this point? Are we okay? Actually, now I remember where I actually tricked them. It wasn't in the constructor. It was in the set function that I tricked them. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again over here. So now let's set the thing. So I want to actually be able to set this. So I'm going to go void set const character pointer m data. What is the difference between setting and constructing? In construction, you're 100% sure that m data doesn't have anything in it. But when you are setting, it's very possible that data already holds some dynamic memory allocation. So we have to make sure we take care of that. So in setting in here, this is what I did in the other class, and I shouted at everyone. This is the one. So in here, if I want to set, first I have to make sure that there is nothing in mData. So I'm going to say delete, delete mData, right? If there is anything in it, it will be deleted. If, there is, if it's null, nothing's going to happen. Then I have to make sure to follow the rule of setting unused pointers to null, correct? Then in here, I'm going to reuse my code and say strm data. And that's where I shout to everyone that you cannot reuse a constructor. You cannot call a constructor. It's not going to do anything. Make sure you don't do that. So now I'm going to actually go in here and do ut.allocopy into mdata the data that is coming in. Oh, I call that mdata? Bad person I am. That's data, not mdata. Why nobody says anything? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so that's data. So it deletes the mdata, then does that, then does an allocopy. And we know in allocopy it, it sets it to null if it's null and yada yada. So I don't need to do that. Uh, so that's that. So now setting is working. Now, in here, I can actually say uh, uh, 
name dot set and uh, why is it still holding the old one? It says m dat. Didn't I change it? Oh, it's m dat still. Data. So I'm going to go say over here set to John Doe and uh, and and print again. So and then I have to say name the print. Correct? So now if I run it, you will see that I have the name and I have John Doe afterwards. So the difference between this and that is that when I actually come to set in here, the difference is that when you come to set, M data is already pointing to Fred Soleil. So first I delete that, now everything is garbage. Now I'm going to set it to null. Now I'm going to go over there and say, get the source that is John Doe, set the destination to null. If the source is not null, allocate enough co memory, copy it, and then it is done and set, and yada, yada, yada. But wouldn't it be nice if I could say over here, dot print, right? Set them printed for heaven's sake. I don't want to go to a new line. If I want this print to actually print it, what should set return? Yes, which is the name, right? It should return the name, correct? So I should make my set return the name. So I'm going to come down over here in str, and I'm going to say, hey, set is not void. Return a reference of str. Correct? Now I'm going to go back to set over here and return the reference of str. And that's where I tell you you can return the current object. Because this is an str, correct? And when I say target of this pointer, it becomes the reference of str and it's returned. So now instead of just printing that, I can actually do this. Name, set to John Doe, print it, and go to new line. All in one line. Right? And I run the program. It works the exact same way. Nothing's different about it. No magic happening in here. All that is happening is that it goes to set, sets everything properly, then returns the current object that is the name. So this is now John Doe that is getting being returned. This is returned. Now that this, that is name, picks up the print, goes to print. The data is not null. It's going to print John Doe, return O stream. O stream returns C out. C out and Enla goes to new line. And life is beautiful. This is called cascading effect. The set and print do cascading, which means each one returns the next, returns the next, returns everything that is needed to come to the next, and works that way. Are we okay with this? All right. For some unknown reason, we are a little early. The other class at this moment, we had to run out. What else? Oh, let's do something else. Now that we're here, right? So, what if I want to concatenate two names? I want to concatenate one name to another. <laughs> so, for that, I'll create another function. I'm going to call it cat. Again, oh, and something that you have to remember. Whenever you see a function is returning void, use the opportunity. Never return void. So even if in an assignment you see I give you a member function and I say this member function is void, don't listen to me. <laughs> Seriously, take the void out, return the current object. If we don't use it, fine. But if we use it, it creates cascading effect and makes life beautiful. So I could make this cat be void. I could say void 
cat, which is concatenate, uh, constant character pointer data, right? I could do that, but because I want cascading effect to happen, I make it SDR reference. So I can return this at the end. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. It'll just come over here. And this one, I'm going to do all the DMA in here just to review all the things are done. All I need to do is I have to, at the end, return this. There is no question about that. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. To do this, we need to look at something. The other class didn't have this. You are having it. So, copy and So, how do we resize an, a dynamic memory? When you're resizing dynamic memory, usually it's like this, like you have a certain amount of space and you want to make it bigger. I have name for that. I want to concatenate solely value at the end. So I want it now to be bigger so I can put the rest afterwards, right? So how do I do that? First, you have to see what is the full size of the memory that you need. So if I have Fred Soleil, Fred is F-R-E-D, right? And Soleil is S-O-L-E-I, so that's five. So I have nine and one space becomes 10. Fred by itself has only five. Now I have to go to 11 plus. So I have to resize and make it bigger. To do that, you cannot resize the original. What you need to do is to create a new one, completely new one, with a new size. Then, you, after you added the amount of memory you needed, what you do, you copy everything from the old one to the new one. So the new one becomes a copy of the old one, but with more space at the end. And that more space at the end is measured to fit exactly what you want to add to it. Then after doing this, you have to make sure you delete the old one so you don't have memory leak. And after you delete the old one, remember, the old pointer is where it's supposed to point to the data. The new one is just a temporary pointer. So what you need to do, you need to, after that, when you delete that, the, the pointer points to garbage, right? Because you just deleted it. You have to make sure that it's Point, first of all, the size is updated. It's 14 now. If you are keeping track of the size, we are not because we have null termination. But you update the new size. Then you make the data, the old data, to point to the new one. So you say the data pointer is pointing where temp is pointing. And after you have done this, the process ends. That temp pointer was a local variable, right? When it's done, the old pointer will vanish, and what you're going to left be uh, is the, the resized memory. Are we okay with this? So let's do it. So the very first thing that I need to, to have over here is the proper size between the two that I want to add. So I'm gonna, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say character temp pointer temp is equal to new character ut.size as ut.strlen of m data right i need to know what is the data that i have plus ut.strlen of data that's the size of that one plus this one and then i'm going to add plus 1 for the for the Schmigelidingi that I have, right? Are we okay with this? So I didn't do any condition check. For now, I'm just writing the logic, then I'm going to put all the condition check and make it safe. 
So now my temp has enough space for both of them. Now what I need to do is to copy the old one into the new one. So I'm going to say ut sdr copy into temp dm data, right? Now the data from the old one is moved into the, okay, new one. I can get rid of the old one now. Now I'm going to say delete m data. Correct? After deleting the m data, what do I need to do? I need to uh, make the m data point to where temp is pointing, right? So I have to say m data is equal to temp. So now m data is pointing to the exact same data, but will more, with more space afterward. So I can actually concatenate the to concatenate it to the old one. So what I am going to do here will be let me just go do some uh, cheating over here. Just a second. I'm going to pause. So yeah, so we SDR cat it over here. So the SDR cat over here concatenates the data after the M data. Now we have to see if everything is safe or not. We have to think about different scenarios. Number one, um, the, uh, having the data being null. If the data is null, I don't need to do anything. Whatever I have, it should leave. So in here, I have to say, if data do the copying, right? So if I have anything in here, concatenate. If not, just let it be. Number two, what if the current object is empty? What if M data is empty? If that's the case, this is going to fail. So for that, I have to make sure if M data is not null, I get the length. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. To make sure if M data is not null, if it has some value, measure the length. If it is null, return zero, which means there is no length. Just get the length of the other one. Now it's a safe one. Are we OK with this? Right? The class ends at 35 or? 35. So I want you to remind me of something at the beginning of the next class. I want you to remind me of, because it, it, this is perfect to uh, add something to the, uh, add something like uh, name.cat John Doe and white in here. Okay? Something like that. But what if I want to concatenate one SDR to another SDR? For that, I need to write this. I need to be able to write uh, SDR cat const SDR reference SDR. This has to get implemented too. Please remind me to do it. You need to be able to concatenate one string to another, not only data. Have a beautiful day, and see you soon.